For 11 years, I gave myself permission to believe that I could have what I wanted. I fought off negative thoughts. I never lost my inspiration. I kept my mind open to the possibility. I kept walking down the path toward what I wanted. I believed it and my mind helped me achieve it. I manifested what I wanted. It was my senior year of college, my parents were in town, and that night we got dressed up and drove to a famous Vermont glassblowing studio called The Mill at Simon Pierce. Now, The Mill has a wonderful restaurant inside, and as we walked into this old building, my mind was fixated on cheddar cheese soup because my roommate had told me I should order it because she said it was unbelievable. Now, when I walked into the restaurant that night, I saw, hanging on a wall, a large landscape painting. It was like the size of a doorway and it was uh, turned, you know, kind of on its side. And it was this massive painting of a Vermont landscape. There were mountains in the background and a beautiful blue cloudy sky and the geese were flying in formation and a stand of trees going down the center, disappearing toward the mountains and the wind was blowing. And honest to God, Sean, I'd never had this kind of experience in my life. The sound in the restaurant disappeared. I was no longer standing in that restaurant. I was in that painting. I could smell the grass. I could feel the breeze. I could hear the geese. I literally lost myself in a piece of art. Never had happened to me before. I leaned back. I'm suddenly kind of back in the moment. I'm like, I'm going to own this painting someday. It just, that was what was right there. And I looked at the price and it said like $3,000. I'm like, not today. And I went back and I sat down and that was it. But the painting never left my mind. You see, there's something called the Zeigenart effect. I, I always say it wrong, mm -hmm. but it's like there's a checklist in your brain that when you have a moment where you're like, this is important, your brain puts it on a checklist. Yeah, and, there's like a notch. Yes, a notch happens. And now your brain as part of the filter in the brain is always gonna be kind of scanning the subconscious to let anything into your mind related to that incident. It can be positive, by the way, like with the painting, or this is how trauma happens too. Mm. Like you have this high intensity emotional experience that notches something in your brain and now your brain kicks in to remember. So uh, bottom line is, uh, I always thought about that painting. Years go by. Whenever somebody would say Vermont, I'd think of the painting. I don't know why, I can't explain it. Never wanted a painting before, was not an art student. <laughs> It's going to law school. It's not like you're out like, collecting art. Not, no, no, yes. no, no. Yeah. And so I, you know, fast forward the story 10 years and my, uh, Chris and I are, are engaged and we're going to go up to Vermont to see the leaves. And immediately I'm like, we got to go to Simon Pierce. I got to show you the painting. As we drove toward Vermont, I could feel that energy moving through my body like electricity traveling through a cord to light up a lamp. The closer we got, the clearer the painting appeared in my mind. Pulling up to the mill, all five of my senses were on fire. As we walked in, hanging in the entrance was another painting by the same artist, Gail Shepard. My heart leapt. It's a sign. Oh my God, it's still here. I grabbed Chris's hand and led him through the mill, room by room, frantically looking for my painting. It was gone. And here's the interesting thing. Chris was more disappointed than I was because I was so sure that at some point I would have enough money to track down the person that bought it, that I would at some point, whether I was 70 years, 60 years, that some point I would own it. Now it's interesting because there were other areas of my life where I did not have this assurance, but there was something about this painting. I kept an open mind. I believed it was possible, even when I wasn't doing anything about it. So a couple more years pass, I turned 30 and my husband asked everybody to just chip some money into an envelope and he hands me an envelope full of $500. I immediately think about the painting. Now, keep in mind, $500 isn't gonna buy shit by this artist at this point. I'm pregnant, I should probably buy a crib or stools for our new house. But I pick up the phone and I call the mill and I'm like, I would like to buy a piece by Gil Shepard. And I'm acting like I have millions of dollars. I have $500, which barely is gonna buy me shit from this artist, okay? But I don't care because I trust and believe. I'm walking toward what I want. I'm giving myself permission to desire what I want. And uh, the guy picks up the phone and he reps her art. And um, I say I have $500 and he pauses. 
And then he says, well, I can send you some Polaroids of some of the small ones. And so I immediately feel the sting. And we so often in those moments talk ourselves out of moving toward what we want. But for whatever reason, I trusted and believed. And so I said, great, send me the small ones. And by the way, there was this one piece and I describe it in great detail. And then the guy goes, well, that was before my time, but I bet Gail will remember. And I'm like, Gail, you know Gail? He's like, of course I know Gail. She lives down the street. Here's her number. So I eventually call Gail and we have this amazing conversation. And I say, by the way, there was this one painting almost 10 years ago big Vermont landscape, a stand of poplars down the center, grass blowing on either side. And I could hear her thinking. And she said, you know, Mel, over the years, I've done so many large format paintings. I'd hate to guess which one it was and be wrong. How about this? Why don't we meet at the mill? We'll walk all around. I'll tell you the stories behind the paintings. And then if you don't like anything there, I'll take you back to my studio and you can look at what I'm working on. And if you don't like anything there, then uh, you can look through my slides. And maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to find this painting that you saw over a decade ago. So a month passes. We go up to the mill. I walk in. We meet each other. She's amazing. She's like twice our age. Just an incredibly cool lady. She's walking around. As we're walking around looking at these paintings, Rich, I've got, I'm like eight months pregnant. I'm realizing these are 10 times the amount of money that I have. Mm -hmm. I can't afford this. Like, I don't, I don't have this kind of money. And I'm getting like more and more into that imposter syndrome. What am I doing mode? Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I'm meeting somebody I idolize. I don't deserve to be here. Right, wasting her time because yes. she thinks she's going to get a payday out of this. Correct. Eventually, we sat down for lunch in that same restaurant where I'd first seen the painting in 1989, and yep, I ordered the cheddar cheese soup. After we ordered, Gail looked at me and said a sentence, I'll never forget. Now that you're sitting down, I have something to tell you. The noise in the busy restaurant seemed to disappear. She said, I've never experienced anything like what I'm about to tell you. When you called me and described the painting to me on the phone, I pretended I didn't know what you were talking about, Mel. I knew exactly what painting you meant. Her husband interrupted, you should have seen her when she hung up the phone with you. She looked like she had seen a ghost. Gail nodded and then said, there have only been two times in my entire career as an artist that I've done two versions of the same scene at the same time. Your painting is one of a pair. I gave one of the paintings to the mill to sell, and I put the other one in storage in my studio. And then she started tearing up as she said, The sister painting to the one that you saw in this restaurant all those years ago is still in my studio a few miles from here. I've never taken it out of storage. It's just been sitting there all these years. That's why I froze the moment you started describing your painting on the phone. You were describing the painting that was in storage. I had thought about getting it framed and selling it a dozen times. Now I know why I never did. I guess it was waiting for you to come looking for it. So we get in the car. And we drive to the mill. And when we walk in, there in the center of this massive kind of barn studio space is an easel with a painting taped up with painter's tape on it. And it was the sister to my painting. There were slight mm -hmm. differences, not as much movement in the grass, but it was one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life. It was as if time suspended and I was standing before that painting in 1990, saying it would be mine. And there I was 11 years later, standing in front of it. And then I felt this massive sort of collapse, Sean, because I thought, I can't, I can't afford this. And so Chris walks over my husband and, and, you know, I've got those big tears hanging on my eyeballs. And I said, honey, I don't need anything. I don't ever need jewelry or 
a nice car. I go, just please, dear God, tell me you will buy me this painting someday. And he yells, hey, Gail, how much for the big one? And she says, well, for Mel, she can have it for $500 because clearly when I was creating it 11 years ago, I was doing it for her. My heart just split right open. You know, it's one thing to see the painting. It was a whole other level to be able to purchase it. It was mine. I'd done it. <sighs> For 11 years, I gave myself permission to believe that I could have what I wanted. I fought off negative thoughts. I never lost my inspiration. I kept my mind open to the possibility. I kept walking down the path toward what I wanted. I believed it and my mind helped me achieve it. I manifested what I wanted and I high-fived myself forward every step of the way. And it now hangs in my kitchen and, it is a, and it's on the, the author photo of the book. And it is a reminder that your mind is designed to help you get what you want. You just have to be willing to believe it's possible. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed that video, by God, please subscribe because I don't want you to miss a thing. Thank you so much for being here. We've got so much amazing stuff coming. Thank you so much for sending this stuff to your friends and your family. I love you. We create these videos for you. So make sure you subscribe. Mwah.